tell me your Japan culture shock? A lady, she's like passed out on a hedge. Every single toilet has a heated seat and a bidet. Dogs in the strollers. Puppies in the windows. Don't. Bad person. Yeah, like don't come back. Great view. Of what? Each other in the bathroom? <laughs> hey guys and girls on Ash Japanese, I'm your flashy fashion reporter, Kat the Cat, and today we're gonna go hit the streets of Tokyo and ask the foreigners here, actually, what is their culture shock? And we found some new and exciting culture shock, something that hasn't happened before. So let's go and ask foreigners in Japan. Give me like a funny culture shock you had here. All the hotels have glass windows into the bathrooms. That, that was all. The, they all have like frosted glass Not in the hotel bath. Not even frosted, just clear glass, and you have to use a curtain to cover the bathroom. And if it's you get a curtain. If you, you get, we've gotten a curtain every time. Nope. That one with a clear door, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right, never mind. <laughs> yeah, we're not a couple, so you can see how that would be a problem. <laughs> oh my you have like a twin room and you're sharing yeah. a bathroom yeah. to make it cheap, but the bathroom is see-through. Yeah, see -through, so yeah we, had, we had to put we a towel kinda... over the one door. Yeah. <laughs> It was a bit, a bit awkward. Oh my god, uh, you became better friends than you knew you would be after this trip. Closer. In like the worst way. <laughs> What's your Japan culture shock? The salary men, how drunk they get every oh, day. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. How did you see that? Oh, we're just walking around like Tokyo, like CBD, and they'll be like a dressed up like salary man in the bushes. And you're yeah. Like, yeah. Our first night, the first time we came to Japan, we were walking to get food after our flight, and there was, I think it was a lady. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, a lady. She just like passed out on a hedge. Like she was just resting peacefully on top of the hedge. <laughs> like backwards? Yeah. She was like, she was kind of like. <laughs> she must have like fallen asleep with the hedge behind yeah, her. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with like a handbag next to her. And we're like, oh, do we, like, do we leave her? Because in Australia, you'd. Like you would get robbed. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, oh, I'll just keep walking. Everyone else is walking past her. Mm. But yeah, that was the first introduction to Japan. Yeah. That's an image now that's yeah. not going to get out of anyone's head for the rest of this video. There's like uh, smoke free streets, but you can smoke in a hotel room. That's just kind of like a, a weird mind, I'm sorry, mind if for me, because that's completely the opposite. Like at home, people go outside and smoke and not smoke anywhere indoors. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was, I was like, that's a bit. I know people do it because, you know, you want clean streets, but I just thought about that. I was like, that's a little bit funny to me. Are you happen to be a smoker or? <laughs> no, I don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> she is in between, I would in say. Between, yeah. She keeps on doing it, not doing it, doing it, yeah. not doing it. She's, not yeah. I have like a e-cigarette. So since you're not allowed to smoke in many places in Japan, do you think it helped you not smoke? I guess. <laughs> but I don't think, I'm, I'm not too bad. Like I don't do that often. <laughs> Yeah. Does she does she? No, I wouldn't <laughs> say. <laughs> it's just sometimes I just it's because it's like a vape with the the whole strawberry ice and things. Sometimes I just smell the the air. I'm like, did you smoke? <laughs> She's like, yeah, just a little bit. But I don't know. I don't think you're too bad. But I don't think it's been like such a big struggle. It's mostly been also because you started out by saying you didn't want to smoke on this trip at all. Oh. And it was mostly in Thailand and Vietnam you got kind of tempted because they I, sell it so yeah. much. When it dies, I'm not going to get anyone. <laughs> oh, big words. Let's see if she holds that. <laughs> she said that a couple of times, I would say. I would say for me, it's just uh, the calmness in the public transit, especially during the rush hours. Everyone just lines up. Everyone's so polite. No one's like throwing people around. Like back home, public transit's hectic. Like it's like a free-for-all. We're here. Everyone lines up. Even just like the stairs are going up an escalator. Everyone's to the left and then they leave the right open for people that just want to walk up. So that's a really big culture shock for me, just the calmness and the chaos. It's sort of a culture, it's not really a culture shock so much, but I, one thing I really like and you don't get in the UK is um, seeing like like animal cafes and um, uh, puppies in the windows and things like that. Like you don't really get that in the UK and just like walking around and seeing that is so cute. And then like you can see even along this street, there's like pig cafes and capybara cafes. I'm like, I can't imagine ever getting that in, in London for sure. Tokyo Station, where there's so many people there at once because there's like 36 million people in Tokyo and all of Australia, there's only 26 million people all up. So yeah, yeah just the amount of people, the wall of people that will hit you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've only ever gotten a train station correct for like three times of like where to go. I always get us lost. So I'm like, it's this way and it's not that way. It's because there's so many ways to go in the stations. I'm going to say not tipping or not being obligated to tip. It's, it's, you, I feel like the service and restaurants here, they go above and beyond. But then on top of that, they don't expect the tip, which is really nice coming from like North America. So it's, it's nice because we feel the need to do it, but you know, they don't, they don't want or need it. 
And it's like, they're just, their service is A1 everywhere you go. Even if it's like a McDonald's or something like fast food, they're just always on top of it. They're so polite. They're so kind. Have you tried giving tips? Previously? Yeah, I did. They were kind of confused. <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh, you forgot this. But I learned later that it's actually considered like rude if you tip them because they think that you think that they're not making enough. It's almost like an insult in a way. I don't know how true that is, but that's what they told me four years ago when I came. So I was like, oh, okay. I don't think it's like that anymore. I think right now <laughs> with the influx of tourists, I think the okay. culture is changing a little bit. So, But it's not expected, so which yeah, yeah, makes a difference. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's fine. You're on your day. But like, you know, like in America, if you don't do it, it's like... It's like don't, bad person. Yeah, like don't come back. Bad so. person, don't come back. Don't tip. Go get out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Any other culture shocks? Um, the scams. I think it's in Shinjuku. They say where it's like free drinks or unlimited drinks. They say it's cheap as well, but it'll be super expensive. They'll hold you in there until you pay it, or they'll like beat you up about it. Yeah. Oh so God. just be careful if someone's trying to get you into a bar. Have you probably encountered some? Yeah, but like you know, when it's because they'll ask you to come in if they ask you to come in just don't go in yeah they're always like tapping on the shoulder being like oh come this way come yeah. this way and it will be like down the back alley and that's where their little like pub is or something yeah they'll lure you in with like girls as well yeah like girls what do you yeah. mean yeah oh they'll be like oh it's like a Ladies. bar yeah. <laughs> wow even though you're a lady they tried to get you into the lady bars not trying to get me they'll try and get him to go <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll stay on the street then <laughs> I would say the biggest thing I uh, noticed was just the people um, with their dogs in the strollers. I think that's so cute. That was a bit of a culture shock because that's not a thing in Denmark or anywhere else we've been for that matter. But I had heard that people really love their pets down here, but <laughs> I've never seen a dog in a stroller before now. Dogs in tiny strollers, sometimes even dressed up, right? Yeah, yeah. And really well taken care of. The, the fashion out here is a lot more explorative. You get a lot more of it in, say, like Paris in Europe but London feels like it's very much adapted a lot of its fashion to the US and so it's it's very similar um, whereas out here like the, anything goes. The only other thing for me was just the clothes that they wear not that you should get your idea of the world from anime but <laughs> I thought that they would wear a lot different clothes than what they wear so I like got here with like my like gym clothes and stuff and like they don't wear scrunch bum pants. Oh, so you felt underdressed? So yeah, I was like, oh my God, I'm so exposed. Because <laughs> they'll wear like leggings and then a long skirt over it. Whereas I'd wear just leggings and like not think anything of it. I don't feel like in Australia we're not modest, but we just don't think as much of it. Like if it's hot, you would just put a dress on and leave the house. But here they'll put a dress on and put a top on under the dress. I'm like, why are you, what's the point of wearing a dress if you're going to put a top on underneath it? <laughs> How did you notice that? Like, oh, I'm the only one who wears leggings. Oh, it's more just the way they look at you sometimes. And you're like, oh, okay, this is not what you wear. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll go buy some pants from Uniqlo. <laughs> you need to put some pants over those leggings? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll go put a skirt on. <laughs> Another big culture shock and definitely something that British people would just be absolutely wowed by um, would be going into any of the arcades here. It's a really, really big day out, whereas in the UK, it's very much more of a, you do it at the seaside maybe. Yeah. Um, whereas here, it seems like everybody has cards that you can go up to any of the machines and, and play on anything. And it just get and, and some of the we would love like that. so good at it. It's just ridiculous to see. Well, like, we would, how, we yeah. would love We would love to have that in the UK and it's just not, it's not anywhere, not to that level, yeah. um, nowhere near. The entire bathroom is just a glass it's box. It has glass. a curtain, but if you go into the room, you walk right into the bathroom because it's not separated, it's just a glass box. And then there's a curtain that separates it from the, <laughs> from the, the bed. bed. So Nick walked into the room when I was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I, She's like, get out, and I <laughs> turn around, walk out of the room. Some really random architecture. So the moment you come into the room, you are in the bathroom. You're, you're, yeah, it's like, there's two glass doors, one to the um, toilet, one to the shower, but the whole box is just glass. So as soon as you walk in, you see sink on one side, toilet and shower on the other side and a glass box. Yeah. Isn't that also awkward because you kind of just can see yourself as well? The entire time? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's frosted. It's frosted glass. It's just not very well frosted, yeah, so you can see through it. You can see through it. It's not frosted. <laughs> it's, it's pretending to be frosted. Oh my god. It's discount frosted. <laughs> I would understand that if it was like a double bed and it's like for no. people that are in the same room, but it's a twin, right? You're in no, a twin. No, no, no. It's, it's a, a double because I think they think that we're in a relationship yeah. because we signed up together. Mm -hmm. And I just haven't 
felt I don't know I haven't felt the need to be like hey we can, like, can we get like a twin <laughs> every time I think there's like a bit of privacy there's something else that takes it away <laughs> yeah when we got into our recent hotel room Nick was like the door doesn't lock and I was like that's your problem with it not the fact that you can see through it <laughs> the bathroom door doesn't lock what the, what's going on so it doesn't lock and it's partly see-through and the beds are like mainly connected yeah 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 nice view though <laughs> good view great view great view of what each other in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> that's what I <laughs> <laughs> so culture shocks. I'm actually getting a bit of culture shocks by some of the tourists that are here because it is fun to wear your favorite anime t-shirt. I get that. And it's also fun to have some Japanese words written on it. But sometimes some of them are very graphic and some of them are kind of inappropriate and you might not want to wear them in public. So please, first, before you come to Japan, find out what your t-shirt says before you wear it in public because some of those are kind of offensive or kind of inappropriate. Be sure to check that one out. But if you want to find out how to not embarrass yourself in Japan, here's a video over there. Go check that one out to make sure you have a good time. Thanks for checking out Ash Japanese and I'll catch you soon.